For the Chinese perspective, we're joined by Victor Gar in Beijing, an international expert on China-related issues. He's been monitoring the news closely. Mr. Gar, what's been the reaction in Thank China you. to uh, Vice President Biden's impending visit? Vice President Biden's visit to China uh, is a very important uh, visit. Uh, overall, between China and the United States, uh, there have been so many strategic trade economic issues to talk about. And the two countries have been improving relations significantly, especially involving military exchange and corporations in the recent period of time. Uh, therefore, even though there have been fallout uh, in the East China Sea recently over the uh, air defense identification zone, the discussion about that fallout will not be the only thing between China and the United States. And I hope uh, Vice President Biden and the Chinese leaders whom he will meet in Beijing will focus on the overall reach and the breadth of China-U.S. relations and promote the greater transparency and confidence and trust between the two countries. If China and the United States can see more eye to eye on major issues in the world, including in this part of the world, then we will have a much better chance of maintaining peace and stability. Okay, I just want to stay with the dispute over the air defense zone for a moment. Uh, there already seems to be moves towards some kind of face-saving way for both sides to uh, defuse tensions. And one is that the United States has now asked its civilian airliners to report to China uh, their whereabouts in that particular air defense zone. Um, are you optimistic that there will be some kind of a deal here? The air defense identity identification zone is not to be established just for one day. It's going to be here forever. Uh, therefore, uh, it will take some time for uh, other countries to live up to this reality. And I think it's very encouraging and very welcoming sign that the United States is already encouraging its civil aviation side to uh, acknowledge uh, the uh, instruction from the Chinese side when they fly over this particular identification zone. Now, let me put it in historical perspective. It is actually the United States who created the concept of the air defense identification zone, and it is still enforcing its own zone. Therefore, it does not give the United States any particular right when China creates its zone to tell China not to do that. The second thing is that in the East China Sea, uh, Japan has for many decades uh, set up its own air uh, defense identification zone and has been expanding that zone over the years. As a matter of fact, the closest point of the Japanese zone is only about 130 kilometers away from the Chinese east coastline. So uh, uh, the Chinese air defense identification zone uh, is very much in response to the abusive use of the Air Defense Defensive Zone uh, identification zone by Japan, because Japan has recent years scrambled airplanes, uh, fighter jets, to warn off the Chinese planes which have entered this zone as if the identification zone on the Japanese side is the, uh, their territorial space. So this is a very uh, daunting situation we are now faced though, because right now China and Japan both have identification zone and to a very large extent they overlap and I think for the United States it is in its own interest as well as in the overall peace and stability in this part for the United States to encourage all the parties to be reasonable and sensible to deal with these very sensitive things in a very careful and prudent manner. Right. It's not in the U.S. interest to side with one party against the other. Okay so we're gonna to have to leave it there. Thanks for joining us.